Hey guys, welcome to this next episode of The Sweet Ever After. Uh, excited to be back with my bride, my one and only, Sydney. How are you doing, babe? <laughs> good, how are you? Good. I, You know, I'm doing really well. Mm-hmm. It's been a really good day. I've been looking forward to this, sitting down and talking more. Uh, we have been listening to you guys and all your feedback you've been giving us, and so uh, we are so grateful that these episodes have been helping y'all. We hope you enjoyed the last episode with Chris and Wendy. Uh, that was such a fun, fun conversation we had with them, yes. and looking forward to having more guests as well in the future. Um, but today, a specific topic, just to kind to get right in it, not to mess around, right. uh, as we've been breaking down different topics and things like that. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the subject of baggage claim. My favorite. Yes, baggage claim. sydney has <laughs> got a lot to speak on this, uh, and so I'm excited. We're going to hear from her and different uh, stories that we've experienced together and uh, also things that she's had to work through in our marriage. And so I'm very proud of her, though. She's come a very long way yes. and has dealt with some very hard things. But when I say baggage claim, of course, one of the things I'm, I'm really talking about is that the idea that we all, right, we all bring things into our marriage. Yeah. Uh, everyone does. We all come from somewhere with something. Uh, and this is something important to remember too, as I'd like to share a lot with the church, is like when you're studying the Word of God, we all come from somewhere with something. And some a lot of times we have a filter on, mm-hmm. like I'm wearing glasses right work. We're both wearing glasses yes. right now. Which you, oh, wow. you look so cute today. Oh, I, like, I like your glasses Love your glasses. Too. Uh, so <laughs> we all are wearing glasses. Like we're both wearing glasses, but we all in a spiritual sense, uh, you know, we're wearing a filter. Like we have mm-hmm. a filter that we're running everything through from past experiences. Yeah. And so we have to confront those filters when we come to the Word of God. We have to confront our biases, right? Otherwise, it will, it will affect how we read it. It will affect how we apply it. Mm-hmm. And this is a similar way with our marriage. When we come into marriage, we come with baggage. Yeah. Um, now, some have less than others. And some have a U-Haul <laughs> or two. <laughs> they, some of us have pulled up with a U-Haul, yeah. as you would say <laughs> you mm-hmm. did with, with us. Um, but we all do come with something. And the thing is, is it does impact how we respond uh, in situations of uh, crisis, how we respond in um, uh, tense situations, in Mm -hmm. arguments, in disagreements. Uh, And this can be not only from past relationships, which we'll talk about. Uh, Obviously, if you've been in a relationship that was not good previous to you getting married, uh, you do carry those things with you and you have to deal with them. But also how we were brought up, you know, uh, how our parents were, uh, Mm -hmm. how we saw them fight, uh, how or maybe how we didn't see them fight or maybe didn't see them communicate at all. Uh, Or maybe you come from a home that was full of uh, anger and problems and then it ended in divorce. And so you haven't really seen a healthy relationship Mm -hmm. acted out in front of you. So all of these things can filter and affect how we speak to one another, yeah. uh, essentially. So this is what we're talking about. So we all bring these things into our relationship and we have strong filters. So um, let's just talk about this, me and you. What yes. kind of, I'm going to start with you, and then I'll, I'll, I'll share too some things that I obviously had to work through and uh-huh. are still working through. Yes. And we're again, all work in progress. <laughs> again, disclaimer, we are not perfect. Yes. We're by no means talking down to you. We're just sharing what we've experienced and what we've seen that works because we are happily married in this yes. thing we're calling the sweet ever after. Yes. Um, but it, it takes a lot of work. So what are some things, though, that what kind of baggage would you say you brought into our relationship? Just whatever comes to the top of your mind right off. Just the, the, the big thing you want to talk about right out of the gate. What, oh, what do you um, think you brought? <laughs> oh, I brought a lot of things. I brought, um, like, emotional baggage from relationships. I brought um, just poor communication skills from yeah. my family. Um, just a lot of dysfunction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what – so – like, let's think of an instance here. Um, there were times I know early on when we were you know, we probably first two years, which were tough anyway. Yeah. Uh, we argued quite a bit. Oh, yes. Uh, and, I pushed a lot of and, buttons. Yes. And and you you in particular liked to get loud. You you mm-hmm. when you, And later down the road, I found out when you felt afraid, yeah. uh, you would try to get mean. Yes. I uh, get mean and I get loud yeah, yeah, so, when I'm scared. So, yes. and, and because you're scared. And we know, uh, you know, one of the things we've learned, and we sh- we've probably already shared on this, but, you know, anger being a secondary emotion, yes. right? It's 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 coming from something else. And for you, it was a lot of fear Mm -hmm. uh, of being afraid of of me leaving, of being afraid of me finding out things uh, that, you know, that you didn't know. I don't know if I want to show them all this, you know. And so you would respond sometimes when things would come up in in very intense ways. That did catch me off guard because I was like, why is that such a problem? Yeah. When I think of a lot of insecurities and fears and, um, yeah. 
Yeah. I think, well, in particular, like, I, I'm thinking of... Um, and rejection. Me, rejection issues. Yes. yes so rejection, one. and sitting in that, in which, you know, you and Sydney have past relationships. So you did, at one point, one of the relationships I know you were in, which, you know, you, you we've discussed different relationships that we were both in and, yes. and things that weren't so great. Uh, but there was one particular relationship you were in that was, was abusive and very, mani- uh, what's the word? It would manipulate a lot. Yeah. Well, I had uh, a bunch of those. I never had, like, a normal relationship. They were all toxic and either emotionally, mentally, or physically abusive. Yeah. Um, it was more than one, so I never had a n- healthy relationship. Oh, wow. They were all I thought at least maybe one of those guys no, in there were. No, nope. So no. I was, it just, you man, were the only easy. one. That's why I was like, I'm going to hurry up and marry Weak this competition. one. competition. Yes. <laughs> so, so, okay, so in, in saying that then, uh, how much do you think that impacted in the way you reacted to me? Right. Where do, where are areas that you saw that that really played a role in some of the times that you would respond aggressively or get over emotional about something that really wasn't a big deal, but because of those insecurities from past relationships, you yeah. just give an example. Yeah, like if I just if I messed up or I did something wrong, um, there would be explosive responses. Um, they would um, just get really really angry or belittle me. Um, so I would go ahead and just try to you know, puff myself up in mm-hmm. response to prepare for that. Yeah. Um, that you were expecting. Yes. I was for expecting to, to you for you to like, just, you know, scream at me or call me an idiot. If I just messed up one little, little uh, thing or okay, did yeah, something yeah. wrong. Um, yeah. I would, I would have a lot of fear that he's going to come home and just like lose it on me because I made this one little mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I remember specifically, and this actually didn't happen too long ago. This was in our uh, uh, our new home we're in now. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you ran into the to the garage <laughs> with yes, your car, I was very scared. <laughs> so you ran into the garage, and I remember specifically you like you came out fighting. You were like, "Your car was too close," and you sh-, and yes. it was just like all this stuff. And I remember I was just looking at you. I was like, "Are you okay?" Yeah, <laughs> and you were just like, "Oh." Y- yeah. Yes. Which your first <laughs> response was to check on me instead of the car, which I know that about you, but just still like from past stuff, it still cropped up. And I was like, had that instant fear. You, you know, I think one of the moments I realized that this was something that really, and, and so this is important too, why I'm sharing this mm-hmm. as well is like, it's not like, like, oh, Sydney had a bunch of stuff she had to work on. So I, I was here to help her. I did have a lot it, though. But, but there were things that helped me that I'm trying to help, you know, if somebody in the relationship is, maybe they brought in less they had less traumatic events in their past or less really bad relationships. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I I didn't have the greatest relationships ever, but for the most part, pretty healthy in the sense of like, there wasn't abuse, there wasn't that kind of stuff. Normal, normal, like, you know, uh, relationships. Mm -hmm. And so when I came in, you know, some of these things I had to look at and I couldn't get in my flesh per se, right, in these situations and 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 see anything change. I had to get to a deeper place mm-hmm. of like, okay, by loving you and again trying to be patient and have a lot of grace and understand like, okay, that was not a normal reaction, so where is that coming from, mm-hmm. right? Like why is this happening? And I remember specifically there was one time we were going somewhere and you gave me the wrong address. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you, you totally messed up, gave me the wrong address. And so we drove to this place that you were like, and it was out of the way already. And like, I really didn't want to go. Yeah. And you're like, no, we need to go. This is where I want to go. And like, this is where we're stopping. I was like, okay, okay, cool. You know? Mm-hmm. So we go and we get there and it's not there. Yeah. Like it's the wrong address. And I, I remember you were so frantic. You like grabbed your phone. You're like, no, this can't be. And, and well, well, and like, you were trying to, you were trying to like, almost like throw it at me as far as like, well, you did something here. Like, this is like, I'm, you were already getting your defense ready. And I I remember looking at you going, Hey, I'm not mad at you. And you were just like, Oh, uh, uh, okay. Well, I was like, where is it at? Did you find it? And you were like, yeah, okay, we'll just go there. Mm -hmm. And, And so not a big deal, but I remember that being a big indicator to me that there was so much hurt from your past Mm -hmm. where you were, you were belittled, uh, treated poorly, you know, when you did make a mistake, you had to go ahead and get ready because here came the wrath. Yeah. Right. And so you, you still weren't, so yeah. you well, weren't and, used and to I that. And I feel like I would beat myself up, up like you're an idiot because yeah. you made one little mistake. You, t- I typed in like the wrong one, wrong number. Yeah. So. And, and, and so terrible. part of that too, though, is, is you came to a place and again, you know, with therapy and different things like that as well, you came to a place where you begin to recognize that, Hey, 
you know, I've got some things to work through. Yeah. And then it also helped me by you communicating that to me that like, hey, sometimes when I do this, it's because of this. Yeah. Right. And so then we started being able to actually say, okay, hold on. I think your response, this is something from something else. This is mm-hmm. a hurt that's coming up now. And, uh, you know, we need to work through this in a different way, not just, you know. And now, again, i would be the first to admit I was definitely not perfect with this. And there were plenty of times where I just wanted to win the argument yes. or I just wanted, you know, and so... I wouldn't be fair with it, you yeah. know, and, 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 you know, and I, again, thankfully the Holy Spirit really helped me. Uh, this is why guys prayer is so important and why having a solid relationship yeah. with Jesus to lead your family and have a healthy marriage is so key. Yeah. Uh, because there was more times than I count where the Holy Spirit called me out and how I dealt with you or how yeah. I handled you harshly. And I had to go back and you can attest and you tell everybody yes. know the truth that, yes. that I did have to go back yes. and apologize and repent to you. And, uh, you know, and thankfully you, you forgave me time yes. and time again. But I didn't make it easy because since I did have a lot of baggage and a lot of past trauma um, for those first few years, I really tried to push all your buttons to see how far I could push you, how angry I could make you and what your limits were to yeah. see how far I could push you to see if you would leave me. I wanted to go ahead and get that right, like yeah. right out of, out of the gate. Like I wanted to see how far yeah. I could go and to see if you would leave me and you didn't, but I didn't yeah. make things easy for you at all. And I didn't intentionally do that. Yeah. And I didn't realize I did that until much later, but yeah. um, I did do that. So well, let's dabble in a minute for uh, probably a more sensitive topic. So obviously we're going to be kind of general effect of, 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 <laughs> of YouTube and not get too specific. But in the sense, too, of like uh, when we talk about physical intimacy, right? So early on we had some struggles because y- you had the filter and the idea that that's all I wanted from you. Yes. Was just, I, I you know, just. That's all you cared about. Yeah, all I want. Yeah. You know, now obviously as a dude, it's definitely something that's important and I'm down with it. But yes. I, you know, but. That, that always left me confused as well early on because I was like, no, I mm-hmm. like I love you. And to me, this is a this is also a part of that is like that we have intimacy together. And yeah. and this is what healthy marriages have. And yeah. and so that early on was a struggle. Can you speak to that at all of like, I mean, even what you were feeling, like why that was such a struggle for you, but also maybe the things that I did that helped you eventually get past that to where we mm-hmm. had a, a better, when we talk about like sex life and things like that, like how we got to a better place from that, because that was a struggle for us early on. And it was really rooted in things that you went through and not so much, you know, just like you and me, but things that had happened before. Yeah. And so like, what would you say are, um, like I was asking, what, what what are some things that you had to work through with that that you recognize? What do you think were causing some of those insecurities and those things? And then also, what were th- things that I did that helped you rather mm-hmm. than, sh- you know what I mean, shame you or, or say, oh, well, you're just, you know, and get mad and, and, and pull back from you and, you know, cut off love, right? Because I felt like I wasn't getting anything as far as in return. So what, like, what are those two things I want to throw at you? Just throw it out and give, give you to answer those. The things that you feel like, what caused it and looking back on it now and what helped you get past it? Yeah. Um, I think that, um, from my past, even in like friendships and things like that, it was, if I didn't perform a certain way, they had, they didn't want anything to do with me. So I feel like I had a hard time understanding that you cared about me and not what I did or how, what I did for you. Um, and it wasn't based on my performance. Um, and that's a lot to do with how our relationship with this, with the Lord is. It's not based on our performance. Um, and so that took a lot for me to realize that you actually cared about me as a person and not the things that I could do for you. Um, I think you being very patient with me and letting me know like, Hey, like we don't have to be intimate today. Like, I just want to you know, cuddle or hold your hand or just spend time with you. Um, that really helped me a lot. Um, just to know that like, it was okay if we didn't, you know, weren't super intimate that week or whatever, just to know that you still, we still had intimacy and a connection, but it didn't have to be on that level all the time. Um, and that you wanted to just get to know me and just spend time with me. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's important. You brought up kind of another topic I think a lot of we have, we have to work through. But as men, you know, it's just like, <clears throat> I guess it, for me personally, it was kind of like if you you weren't in the, let's say, the mood, mm-hmm. right? Like, I, I wasn't interested in you just doing something for me, like as you thought, oh, 
oh yeah, sure. Well, I better throw him a bone kind of thing. Yeah. Well, know, I always, like... And I also always <laughs> joke about um, how I heard on this marriage uh, podcast that men are like toasters and women are like crock pots. Mm. So like once we got that, that also changed our marriage too yeah. of like, hey, you have to like initiate like a connection. It doesn't need to be like yeah. sexual or physical or whatever. Just like make connections throughout the day yeah. of like checking in on me or like sending a little sweet note yeah. or doing something sweet and stuff like that instead of just, you know, no contact throughout the day. And then you just come home like, hey, what's up? Yeah. What's up? Right. Yeah, yeah. But it's always funny to me if it's, it's it's kind of flipped the other way, then typically guys are just like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's cool. It's like Pop-Tarts. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. cool. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> Not saying that things can't ever be spontaneous, sure, but yeah, for the yeah, most yeah. part, it's like there's levels. Like you have to like meet us at like a, yeah. you know, yeah. in our minds and yeah. things like that. And well, well, I think one of the big things to pull up too is, is as you mentioned, you were in a lot of relationships that were traumatic and abusive. Mm-hmm. And so, and in that area of too, of course, being abused in different ways like that and that being used in negative ways, mm-hmm. I think really also impacted our marriage at the start, yeah. right? Because we had to work through that. Mm-hmm. And it was, had to be something that it's not like, again, it's not something as like a power thing or I'm trying to just get this from you, right? Mm-hmm. It's a part of a whole healthy marriage, yeah. which again, as you would say, you know, it's like, well, I didn't know a healthy relationship yeah. up to that point. So mm-hmm. like, and especially as being married, you mm-hmm. know, it's like, you know, expectations and things like that, which again, we probably could have done a better job before we, we got married super quick. Yes. So this is why, again, with like premarital counseling and things mm-hmm. we do with other couples is like we ask, we confront these things because of course they say the number two, the two things that you find about most in marriage is uh, sex and money. Mm-hmm. Those are the two top things that every married couple fights about. And so those are the two things we like to try and address early on yeah. to let each couple know, hey, you're going to run into this at some point. So you might as well go ahead and start sharing your expectations now yeah. so you can you can be ready that, like, you understand and it's not just and, – and, and you can we can also confront unrealistic expectations, yeah. things that just aren't possible. And it's yeah. not, you know, it, that's not going to happen. Um, so anyway, that, that was something I found important I think a lot of people probably deal with. And they don't mm-hmm. realize that it is actually coming from past traumatic events in that person's life, yeah. uh, especially when you get to this kind of conversation and what's happening. Yeah. So I just – I found that interesting and kind of yeah. wanted to bring it up. I feel like it might be helpful. Um, yeah. Well, and I think I also – had to uh, work through a lot of, um, like, my views on sex mm-hmm. and things like that. And um, just, I don't know, just understanding what it really is in, like, the context of marriage. Yeah. And um, just not feeling guilty for when, you know, I am just mm-hmm. didn't want to, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I would, like, feel like, oh, I am a horrible wife because I... I'm not in the mood today, you know, so I had yeah. to, like, work on that. Like, it's fine to yeah. not want to. We can readdress this at yeah. another time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it wasn't my fault that I wasn't in the right headspace in yeah, the moment, yeah. but I would allow myself to to kind of spiral and feel super guilty yeah. and things like that and beat myself up over it, which wasn't healthy at no, all. No, no. And which it then goes down into that shame spiral yes. where it just continues to actually get worse. Yes. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's again, why I think um, in which, you know, we're eventually going to talk about communication. It's going to be a whole episode of itself. But this is where I think clear communication is so key. And so one of the things I want to talk about is the fact that some of this stuff we recognized early on and you shared it with me and you said, hey, this is why. Because for a long time I felt rejected. Mm-hmm. So I felt less than. I felt like she doesn't love me or I felt like she just doesn't find me attractive or, you know, this isn't, she's not into me. And, you know, so that was something I had to battle in my head. Right. And then, so until it came out that like, like, oh, well, I went through this and this. And so when you, when, when this is what it seems like to me. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then I could take, I could actually combat that and say, okay, well, I want to make sure and be clear with her throughout the day, right, that I love her. And not only that, but I'm thinking more than that. But also I think as my personality general is like I said, I wasn't just looking for you to be like, oh, well, it's it's been too long. We got to, you know, help them out kind of thing. But instead of being actually something that you want to to be a part of. Yeah. You know, because I was never like, like, you know, and unfortunately I do think there are a lot of men probably out there that it's just more like, well, as long as it's happening, cool. Like as yeah. not as not really no. being engaged in the sense of like yes. you know like you just said total intimacy. Yeah, and I don't think a lot of physical. men think about how they have to in, like pursue their wives and um, 
it's a con like you you yeah. constantly pursue like the husband is supposed to constantly pursue their wife it's not just uh oh we're married now so this is just an expectation like no you oh, yeah, you still good. need to romance and pursue a little romance her, even as much as you, you know? can you can make in there when you have little ones and, yes because like, yeah, we know that stuff yes yeah. you can still be romantic within yeah, yeah. you know that you, what you're working with yeah, you know yeah. you can still find intimacy and times of connection yeah um and little things like that like yeah. i feel like a lot of men um don't think about those things or they're not willing to just put in the extra little time to to do those things and it's not hard it's not hard to send a little message or leave a little note or do something sweet but it does it does require Mm -hmm. intentionality yes and so i think that is that is one thing that gets us caught up in some of this stuff is like of really paying attention to the details as Mm -hmm. we kind of mentioned in a previous episode that like it's not just about the big date night yeah right like it's like how were we with how was what did i do for you on monday Mm -hmm. that lets you know that i love you yeah something simple and easy right but Mm -hmm. like how love is so paramount to you and respect is so paramount to me. Like, that's the question we have to be asking ourselves. Like, okay, did Sydney, did I make Sydney feel loved this week? Yeah. And then at the same time you saying, okay, does Matt feel like I respect him? Mm-hmm. Like, does Matt know that I trust him? And does Matt know that I'm confident that he can lead, you know, yeah. and those kind of things uh, and showing him how much I care. Yeah. You know? And I think understanding your partner's like love languages, like how they receive and give love. Like you have to be intentional of learning yeah. what those things are and, and, yeah. Even if they're outside of your comfort zone of different things, like yeah. words of affirmation. If you're not very good with words, okay. you can Google, yeah. you can, you know, get some different little yeah. little sayings. Just, yeah. you know, be intentional and make some effort to just meet yeah. them at their needs, you know. And yeah. Yeah. Or if you don't like talking, like if you're not a much of a talker, um, obviously that's not a problem for me. But if, yes. <laughs> if you're not much of a talker, you know, writing a letter, yeah. uh, you know, as you said, little notes. I yeah. remember I used to... Uh, uh, early on when I was trying to be, you know, just trying to figure out what worked, but mm-hmm. I'm uh, being really intentional. I remember I would leave you different notes mm-hmm. on the mirror. I remember that we kind of had a big knockdown, drag out fight and it was a really bad one. And I remember we were like, we sat down and we're like, Hey, we got to, we got to make a change. Yeah. Like we got to do something. And you expressed to me, like, I need to know you love me and I need to see it in different ways. Mm-hmm. And so I remember I did letters for a while on the mm-hmm. mirror for you when you would get up and then you would leave me a response. And those were just different things that we tried that were mm-hmm. easy, not crazy. Of course, my yeah. handwriting was terrible. So half yes. the time you're probably like, I think this says he loves me. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> we'll just go with that. Did, if... I, did a five-year-old write this? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Well, and if you're not good with conversation, there's there's conversation cards you can oh, yeah. find so on, um, like yeah. on Skin Deep or mm-hmm. on Amazon. You can find conversation yeah. cards and just pick yeah. one once a so, week or something. So we're, we're, yes. we're trying a little more in the communication, which is fine. Communication is such a big deal with relationships, but we will have a whole episode really oh, dedicated to that. Stuff. No, you're, you're, it's not your it's not your bad at all. It's good. Um, but that being said, when we're dealing with past trauma and hurt, mm-hmm. we have to be able to claim it in the sense of like we take responsibility. Yes that we need to get healing. Yes, and work through yeah. things, even if it's very hard. Like, you're responsible for dealing with the trauma. Like, you're not always responsible for the things that happen to you, but you are responsible for working through those yeah. things and yeah. getting healing yeah. for that and not just shoving them down and being like, well, that happened so long ago yeah. that, you know, it, it's not a big deal now. Like, yes, yeah. like, you can go all the way back to to birth, you know, of like there's childhood trauma and and different things. Like you need to work through your things because they will come out in different ways in your marriage. Yeah, in your behavior for sure and the way you treat one another. And so I think that's so important and one of the things that we've seen a lot of success with. But then also we hit, you know, I feel like we were in a really good groove, a place, I mean, we've been married up to like 10 years uh, and then we got involved with fostering. Yes. Uh, which lit we got, everything on fire. Yeah. And and so that was almost like a reset. And it also awakened a lot of things that happened to you. Yeah. Cause because I had a lot of unresolved trauma that had. Because of our son's yeah. behavior and because of his aggression and his projection on you, mm-hmm. which then awoke a lot of things that then it imploded in our marriage. Yes. That I was like, oh my, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so much to have to deal with, which is again why we have to. We have to claim these things. We have to recognize, yes. and which it, you did. You saw that, like, hey, this is not you. This is not even him. Yeah. This is what happened to me years ago. That my mind 
blank. It, it, it's for my protection. Yeah, it suppressed it, a lot yeah, of it things. Yeah, suppressed it. But all of this has now brought it back mm-hmm. up, and I've remembered what's happened to me. I remembered I went through this. Now I have to deal with yes. it. Yes. Like I can't just ignore it. Yeah. And and the other thing I would say too, what's so important with these issues when we're talking about baggage and claiming it, is what's so important and powerful with it is once you do accept, okay, yes, there's a problem here, mm-hmm. and then you you have to you have to say, okay. It's not okay for me to keep responding this way. Yeah. Because what some you know married couples will do, and I've seen it within it, and and, and been tempted to do it myself, is to ignore it. Yeah. And just say, well, I'll just I won't do those things around her, and I'll just kind of redirect, and I'll just walk on eggshells, and I'll just try not to set her off because I just don't want to deal with it. Yeah, that's exhausting. And you can't live yeah. like that. And then eventually yeah. you end up resenting yes. your spouse, which is such a bad place to be. Yes. And it really is the signal that, mm-hmm. that your marriage is, is dying yeah. because you are resenting your spouse yeah. because of the things that you feel like you can't do or say. Yeah. And so we have to be able to fully communicate. And although it is tough at times, just like at times when, when I did, I confronted certain things and said, hey, this isn't fair. Yeah. And like the way you respond here is not right. And yeah. like, I can't keep d- doing this like this, like yeah. it has to change. And to have those conversations and ha- be a safe space to receive that kind of correction yeah. um, and to give it, but mm-hmm. to also recognize that sometimes you have to have your um, unhealthy responses pointed out because there's also a book called The Body Keeps Score yeah, yeah. that sometimes your mind and your, your brain and your memories don't remember things that happen to you, but your body does. And yeah. so sometimes things will be triggered that you're responding in an unhealthy and unrealistic way that like you yeah. shouldn't, or unreasonable, yeah. you shouldn't be responding in certain ways. Yeah. Um, so it's like, hey, like let's figure out what's going on and yeah. why I'm feeling this or that yeah. when this happens, you know? Yeah. yeah, I think, you know, we can't, um, when we lose control, you know, because obviously we know a fruit of the spirit is self-control. Mm. And so anywhere that the, the, any area in your life that is not surrendered to the spirit, right, that's not surrendered to the Lord, you won't have self-control in. Yeah. You'll lose all control in that moment of whatever it is. And so that's a good indicator too. When we, we talk and we call them triggers, of course, today in society, well, it's about my trigger, mm-hmm. right? And, and so the thing is, is when you have a trigger, simply all that is, uh, that is being signaled is that as an unsurrendered area to the Lord, it yeah. needs healing. Yeah. And like the only way that takes place is if we talk about it. Yeah, and you have to work through your triggers and yeah. get healing and not just be like, this is just something. This that, is how I am. Yes, this yeah. is just how I respond to things and that's just how it's going to yeah. be. And, you know, that's it. That's not realistic. Yeah, so like, like, like and when we talk about like mental health and things like that, because again, this is really kind of this topic is like a past trauma. Mm-hmm. And of course, when we got trained for foster care and everything we've been through with that and even mm-hmm. with our experience with Michael and everything he went through, mm-hmm. we saw healing come to his life. But like we went through all this training, which then <laughs> allowed us to see in each other yeah. past things that were still bothering us. But then also in other relationships where we brought counseling and stuff like that, it's mm-hmm. like you start seeing like, oh, why do you do that? Yeah. And, you know, sometimes people don't even think it's like, oh, well, that's just normal. Married couples fight. And it's like, yeah, but not like that. Yeah. <laughs> like that's not, yeah. no, that's not healthy. Mm-hmm. That's not good. And then it's just all of a sudden like, oh, why do I do that? And then you realize, oh, because this is my dad treating me like this mm-hmm. growing up, or I saw my dad do this to my mom, mm-hmm. or I've seen the only male, like the main male person in my life treated women terribly. Mm-hmm. And so this is just how I treat my wife. And, and it's like, well, no, that's not okay. Yeah. And so being willing, like you said, to accept the correction, because if you want to improve your marriage, because that's the other place is like, it, unfortunately, I feel like people just get kind of settled Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, no, this is just how it is. And uh, that's not right either. It's, yeah. you, you know, you should want to be able to continue to grow closer, to continue to have better communication, yes. to work through the areas to where you have these things under control. It's not, you know, just ah, and like I blow up and I scream at everybody and then I'm, I'm horrible to be around for this, you know, however hour. Right. But then I come back and I just say, let's pretend like none of that happened and let's just go on. It's like, no. Yeah. And what we've seen with uh, with fostering and um, and TBRI, trauma based relational intervention, is that you can actually reprogram your your brain and Mm -hmm. your connections in your brain to respond differently. But it takes that intentionality and time to actually do that. So it's like when you're saying, oh, well, I would love to not respond this way or get healing and you know get over these areas it's like okay yeah you can you just have to be intentional and commit time to doing that and you can 
heal and re reprogram your brain and your responses to yeah, have healthy responses. You don't have to be this way forever. Yeah. And that's, I think, the good news. Again, this is why I, I always say this. I don't know how people make it without Jesus. I don't know, like, because in marriage, because I look so many times our marriages when we were at crossroads, when we were at things and, and tough things, like when we were fostering with Michael and, like, mm -hmm. everything was falling apart. It was like I so held on to the Holy Spirit and so held on to the fact that God could heal this, that yeah. that he can help me, that he can show me what to do, and, like, he can make me a better man, he can make mm -hmm. me a better husband. And um, so I think that's the, the important part is, is to claim, like I said, yeah. take responsibility for what you've brought in. And, and, and recognize that it doesn't have to stay this way mm -hmm. and it can get better. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you do. You have to claim it. You have to yeah. deal with it. You, you have to stop ignoring it. And so that's what I would tell, tell men, you know, is to recognize that, like, hey, if you brought something in and you're seeing now, like, okay, maybe the way I respond to my wife isn't okay. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not normal. Maybe it is because of what happened to me here or what I've seen most of my life or whatever. Well, start dealing with it, but start mm -hmm. communicating to her yeah. about it, right? Well, and to also allow your wife to point out things without you responding with deflection or feeling guilty. Yeah. And so then you get angry. It's yeah, like, yeah. No, just listen. Yeah. And. Yeah. And, 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 and if you can't do that at that moment, d just take a step away and come back to where yeah. it can be a fruitful conversation. Uh, because, again, there's times where I did bring up things to you and, and you immediately took it as rejection. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, well, and this is this is kind of your cue and indicator to know that you, you're the one that's having the problem mm -hmm. is when you start saying, well, I guess I'm just always horrible. And I guess I'm just the worst thing to ever happen to you. And yeah. I guess I'm just, like, when you start going there, yeah. that's where, you know, no, 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 you've got a problem. And now you're trying to become the victim. Yes. <laughs> this situation so to you get need you a out moment, of it. Because yes. if you like, hey, I need to take a moment to sit with this. Yes. And usually if you do and you take that moment, you will come back and be like, you know what? Yeah. You were right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just needed a minute. Good times. Well, anything yeah. as we sign off here on this episode, uh, anything you'd like to add before we say later? I think that's it. That's it. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us and uh, checking this out. Make sure you check out the other episodes, like and share, and we will catch you next time. Sweet, ever after.